Hello everyone, this is the new platform we'll walk through of Requesty since we rebranded our uh, whole platform to have both dark mode and light mode. Uh, so you can just switch to those right here and this will help you uh, get your preferences. So when you get to getting started, there should be a guide on how to get started, but also how to join our Discord community, how to join our Slack or speak to us if you have any problems or any wishes. Uh, you can also click here on to see this actual video again. Uh, but here will be some, some things that you need to do, like set up your environment, set up your API keys, which I will let you do. But very quickly, all the admin related things will be on the left side. So you can create or manage an organization to invite your teammates, but also manage your account, change your name, change your email address. But for security reasons, you can also add uh, two-step verification um, just to make sure your account is uh, secure. We also added some really cool things like visual effects, like particles. So uh, you can play around with those, uh, which we've added for fun and change your team. Now, important when you come into Requesty, we have native integrations with some of your favorite apps like GrooCode, Klein, OpenWebUI, but also if you're coding, you're making an actual AI app, you can use Langchain or Panentic, uh, which is all explained in here. Then once you've done and investigated that, it's all about uh, setting up an API key. Um, you can see here the logging is on or off. If I turn it on, I will have the actual logs and the logs will be stored in our database, which is, what does that mean? It's just inputs and outputs. If you turn this on, we will just keep the metadata, such as the input tokens, output tokens, um, and any of the cost related uh, features. Now you can see here, we have one policy for API key test five. We can actually go here and configure this. So we know logging in is enabled. We see one active policy and we see the policy being entropic. So this is actually a fallback policy. Let's create a new fallback policy. For example, I want to use uh, Atropic, uh, or let's say Claude 3.5 uh, Sonic, and I want to use the latest one. Now, this is great, but what happens if Atropic is down? That is problematic. Now, maybe I want to use Claude 3.5 uh, on Vertex. So you can see here, that the provider here is Entropic and here the provider is Vertex. So what will happen is that we will automatically go first to Entropic and then to Vertex if uh, your request fails. You can add retry policy. So this makes it really, really easy to either use it with one of your favorite tools, but also use it for your AI applications in terms of reliability. If you wanna try different models and you wanna load balance it across different models, you can click on load balancing you need to add a weight, so for this would be 50, and this would be 50, uh, and that's how we can load balance between both. Then there's some features that we have here for if you're using uh, root code inclined to remove EMCP prompt or optimize system tokens, where we'll basically save tokens for you out of the box. Um, now what's really important is the analytics. So once you've actually started using um, your API key, you can go into the analytics to see your actual analytics. So now you can see I didn't do any requests in the last couple of days, but I had loads of requests uh, before that, so you can see all that. What we have here directly is also the cost savings. So out of the box, we do a lot of optimizations, such as prompt caching, token optimizations, just for you so that you get these cost savings out of the box. As an enterprise organization, you can turn this off directly with us so that you're not uh, impacted if you want to control everything yourself. So these are the basic dashboards that we have. But as you can see, we have an advanced tab here. So what is the advanced tab? The advanced tab is basically going further into the details. So we can see here all of the data actually per model. How much am I actually spending per model? And how much am I spending per day? Now, what's really cool is that you can see this in total, but you could also say, I don't wanna see this per day. I just wanna see the total sum of my total costs per model. And you can see that actually O3 was the most costly. Um, we spend the most money with uh, opening O3. Now, what if I want to see the output tokens? Or even more importantly, I actually don't want to see the sum. I want to see the median or the average per request. Now we can see still see, okay, O3 is actually the most expensive that we have, about 25 cents per request, which is quite expensive. Uh, but it's a very good view to see this. Very important that if you use the LLM gateway from Requesty, you get all of this out of the box. Um, now, I'm really always interested and passionate about output tokens. So within this demo data, we did all of the same requests. Um, so there's exactly identical requests. 
uh, just to see how much output tokens we have per model. And we see that Gemini 2.5 Pro Preview outputs a lot more tokens than the other providers for the exact same requests, which is fascinating when you're building an AI app, that is very, very important for you to understand. Um, then there's other things where you could just say, oh, I actually wanna see which team is actually spending the most, or did we, um, did we do security detected? So what is security detected? Uh, let me just go to requests uh, and some actually. So security detected is if we are going to detect some security issues with your account. So what you can see here is that the secret key, there's 220 times that we've seen a secret key leaked or PII data we've seen is 135 times. Um, so very important if you're building an AI app or you're using it for coding that you can monitor and control uh, what data is being leaked from your company. Um, how to configure this within request C is in the admin panel. Um, I'll just go to guardrails on the right. Uh, and basically what you'll have to do in the guardrails is enable the ones that you need or want for your organization. So you can do remove PII data from the request, remove secret keys or any banking details or any financial details. Uh, and we will automatically mask that so the provider will never see those, um, which is very important. Additionally, what you can do in the models is approve models. So as an admin, you can say, okay, we only approve these models for our organization. Uh, the easiest way to do that is in the model library. So if I go to the model library, uh, I'll reset all my filters. You can see all of the different models here. There's 229 models. Now, if I click on filters, I can choose, for example, I only want EU as a location and I want no data retention and no uh, use of training. And I apply these filters, I only have six models left. Uh, and what I can do now is go to list and I can approve these models and add them to my approved list of models. So that, will, that means that anyone in my organization can only use these models when uh, using a request API key. So that's what we have so far. Uh, then there's all the individual logs that you can see. And the last thing that I wanted to add is that you can actually manage your prompts within the request prompt library. What does that mean? That is that we will actually replace the system prompt, either the solution you're using or the system prompt of your code to handle it here. So for the root code users, everyone knows the Gozu coder system prompt, you can click on it, you can view it, uh, but you can also make your new prompts. Uh, there will be versioning in included so you can see the different versions of each prompt. Uh, and I will override the default system prompt. Uh, I hope this tutorial was good enough and you've seen everything about Requesty uh, and I hope you have a good day.